Hello there. What this script is for is to extrude uh, polygons along arbitrary paths. And so to illustrate that, I'll just go ahead and select some polygons and some edges. And you can see the polygons aren't connected to anything. The edges are just an arbitrary place on the script. And it extrudes the uh, polygons along that edge path. Um, the way it works is that it actually uh, just looks at these edges like they're actual angles in space and actually will extrude along those angles. It doesn't matter whether or not, you know, the polygons up here, see it's still firing along those same angles. Also, another thing to note is that um, you can have any, like, actual edges selected. So, like, you can uh, do that kind of thing. Just like the polygons on the script. And there's no like gimbal lock or anything. You'll have a perfect angle every time. Now, the way it works is that it's actually um, looking at these two angles and will um, figure out the ang angle in between and will then fire a ray from each vertice out along this edge until it hits that angle's arbitrary plane and then it will stop. And then you know it'll do that for each round, and then uh, go to the next edge row and fire until it, it meets there. You can do um, you know like edge loops. So if you want to uh, put this over here, and you can also do uh, fire the script like multiple times at once. And the way that works is that. Um, what you have to do is you have to uh, copy and paste the geometry and put it next to each edge row you want to select. So say I want to put baseboards along all three of these walls. What I'll do is I'll select all the polygons. There's no orders needed. And I'll select all the edges. And there's no orders needed with the edges. You can select in a completely random order. There we go. Um, let's have this one go even all the way around. There we go. And now, what you want to do is have the same number of uh, polygon sets as edge rows. Otherwise, um, you know, I'll cancel out of the script if there's more or whatever. Um, another thing is, is that the way that each polygon set finds out which edge row it wants to go to is based off of which vert it's closest to. So this one's closest to this vert, so it says I'm, you know, with this edge row. This one says I'm closest to this vert, so I'm with this, this edge row. And uh, when you fire this, it will extrude all three of these. There we go. It's all perfect. Okay, another thing to note is that you don't even have to have the uh, polygon set within the constraints or within like the actual um, limits of this edge row. It'll try to uh, find its way. See? Okay. Okay, another thing to point out is that the uh, script works with, with two um, polygon Collection types. I'll, I'll go ahead and illustrate the uh, the two. This right here is just a um, collection of one-sided polygons. That's it. And here I'll just create a uh, cube. Okay. Um, if you select this and this, what happens here? Let's just select these edges. Okay. Um, this polygon set says there's nothing. There's no polygons connected to me, like outside of this selection. So I'm therefore a uh, flat polygon selection. And so I'll extrude in both directions along the edge, which is exactly what you see here. Extrudes in both directions. Um, but if you've got something that's actually 3D, it's not 2D, it's got uh, polygons around, what I do is I extrude only in one direction. And that one direction is the direction that has more edges. And in this case, it just happened to find two more in, the, in this direction, only one in this direction. So if you um, want to go, whoops, if you want to go this way, just like that, fire it. There you go. It extrudes only in that direction. I think a better way to illustrate that, let's just go to a 2D view. Let's just create a hallway. What I'll do is I'll just use the pen tool. And there we go. I should just round this out for fun. Now I'll select all these edges. Okay, now let's select this polygon. Now this polygon, it's um, 
it's 3D, quote unquote, because it's got other polygons surrounding it. And so I'll determine that I only want to fire in one direction. So you look down here, if you look at the sedge row, we got a whole bunch of verts on one side of it, and only one vert on the other ones. So it decides to go in this direction. So I fire it. And there we go. We just extended our hallway. Uh, now, if you wanted to actually extrude in the other direction, what you do is just have more edges on that side. So I'll select that polygon. Whoops. Select that polygon again. Okie dokie. There you go. So I just extruded in that direction because there were more edges on that side. And remember that it doesn't matter where the uh, actual depth of these edges are because all I'm getting is angles. So it can be way up here. And I fire it. And I get the same exact thing as if it was placed right in the center. Um, now what's cool about it is that your um, your uh, polygons aren't going to be moved to these edges. All they do, all the edges do, is define angles. So you can orient in, in these however you want. And, and, and it'll so like I've got it touching the ground right there, exactly where I want it, and I've got it touching the wall right there, exactly how I want it. And I just select those edges, and it extrudes exactly how you would predict. There's no um, you know, moving of the polygons so it, to, to the edges or anything like that, so it doesn't actually like uh, do something that you didn't want to do. It's extruded exactly from that uh, point in space. I also want to show that there's um, like no gimbal lock, no uh, errors really um, in terms of like the twisting or anything like that. So I'm just going to hey, go ahead and create a weird sphere, and I'll be right back. Okay, I uh, created a uh, huge sphere, and um, and create a little polygon set. Uh, select a whole bunch of edges. Now let's go ahead and run the script. It takes a while because this is a whole lot of edges and a whole lot of uh, you know extrusions and invert moves to to perform. Okay, and uh, as you can see, there's like uh, no twisting, no errors. It's doing exactly what it should. All right, having said that, I'll show the one thing that I would uh, eventually like to have changed, and that's if you have a, uh, a really huge polygon, and you uh, have it cross itself. Like, see this right here? Um, there's no code in there to actually have these verts removed. You're going to get an overlap. Um, what I do to remove it is I actually just uh, fire some of my other scripts where I uh, select the uh, edge row or edge loop. I select the, the ones that are going to be overlapping and the, uh, the, the two touching ones. And then I select the edge uh, loop, I think. And then I just go ahead and uh, deselect the ones I don't want to. Uh, Collapse. All right, so there we go. Now I just run another script, which is the uh, unbevel. There we go. It just smashes it down, and it's all uh, cleaned up. If you wanted, you could then you know edge bevel this. Um, I'll eventually put enough uh, you know a tool that will actually uh, try to correct overlapping bevels. But that's quite a bit of work, and it actually takes only a couple seconds to fix. So uh, uh, there you go.